I've mentioned it a couple times and it gets a lot of uh, good feedback, a lot of uh, interaction on social media. And that is the topic of being a neurodivergent man, neurodivergent person, man in particular. Uh, what the hell does that mean? Uh, it's an umbrella term for people that suffer, suffer, listen to me, people that have a particular um, trait about themselves that, uh, for example, uh, ADHD, uh, which is uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, uh, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, dyslexia, dyscalculia, I think it's how it's pronounced, um, the autism spectrum, all, and there are more, which I've left out, I'm sure, but all of these fall under the category of being a neurodiverse person. And yes, we can look at, this isn't like a made up thing. It's just, you know, I have some people that get angry about, oh God, yet another made up term to try and excuse things. No, this is very real condition. We can, you know, do brain scans on people and see they're, they're wired differently. They are neurodivergent. This is the average. This is the, you know, quote unquote, normal brain, average brain. And they're just a little over here. Nothing wrong with that. And in fact, what I've learned over the years by um, interacting with members of our private group, guys in the, in the public comments, we attract to our material and guys like me, um, men, more neurodivergent men than what is represented in the general public. So let's say I'm making up this number. I don't know if this is true. 10% uh, of the general public is neurodivergent. Um, if you took my, my uh, audience, it's probably like 50%. They're overrepresented in, uh, in, in my audience. But so the question is, what the hell, Ralph? Why? Um, people with, who, who do I attract to my material are guys and gals for that matter, guys with, uh, relationship problems. They've been hurt badly by a woman or women, uh, the dead bedroom thing, been cheated on, going through a divorce. People that are neurodivergent tend to have way more relationship problems than people that are not. I think the divorce rate, I read one study, I haven't seen any other studies to back this up, is like 80 plus percent amongst people that are neurodivergent. Holy poop. That's a lot. Hence why I see a lot of them. And um, I've talked to a lot of guys and they will be telling me stories. Uh, one thing I often hear from people is uh, uh, one of my children is uh, on the autism spectrum, which it sounds kind of cynical and insensitive, but a lot of therapists and, and, and physicians and such will tell you the same thing. And when they hear that from somebody, they kind of snottily say, oh yeah, well, which one of you, the mom or the dad, which one is also on the spectrum? Which one of you is also neurodivergent? Which takes some you know, parents by shock, like uh, neither of us. And the doctor's like, eh, chances are one of you is, at least. And sure enough, they're usually right. So when I hear that from somebody, I'm like, oh, interesting. And then you listen to more to stories and you hear the guy tell about himself and his life experience and the difficulties he's had. And I will say to a lot of these men, are you familiar with, often it's the, the concept of ADHD. And what a lot of these guys come back with, oh yeah, I was formally diagnosed with that years ago. It's like, well, dude, that explains a lot right there. And I'll have some men that say, I am on the autism spectrum. I'm a very high functioning guy on the autism spectrum. I hear that quite a bit. Um, but it's nothing to uh, be ashamed of. Not at all. It's nothing to be like, oh God, I'm a weirdo. Or, no, dude, you're in good company. If you're on the, uh, in, if you fall under the umbrella of being a neurodiverse or neurodivergent, they both are the same thing, person, you're in good company. Only some of the greatest, biggest minds that have ever lived are neurodivergent. It's been theorized and it's pretty much a for sure thing based upon what we know of the man. Albert Einstein, yeah, probably neurodivergent. Um, I know he's a controversial figure now, but he is undeniably successful and intelligent, and that is uh, Elon Musk admits to, he calls himself Asperger's, which means a very high-functioning uh, autistic person. Uh, uh, Bill Gates, uh, an actor you may not be aware of. Anthony Hopkins, you remember him from Silence of the Lambs? He admits he's on the autism spectrum. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld has hinted about he thinks he's on the autism spectrum. I don't know if he's been... Uh, 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 formally diagnosed or not, but he's, he has a lot of those traits. He says a lot of social you know, things about him, how he interacts with people and so forth. Um, so anyway, you're in good company. It's nothing to be worried about, but it is something that can be, that can dictate some of your direction in life. And you can put some things in place, if, if not some pharmaceutical help for some of you guys, 
for some guys, you know, that are on the ADHD world, uh, things like uh, Adderall, Ritalin, other stimulants and other things, they're just like, holy crap, where was this 20 years ago? This would have changed everything for me. This is just, it's like a light switch went off and now I'm able to focus and I'm able to complete tasks for the first time in my life and all those things. Well, some people on the autism spectrum may go talk to an expert, like a Mr. Uh, Dr. Matt uh, Zakreski, who I just did an interview with. It'll be posted on Monday. He's an expert in this. And um, they can give you tools to help you better navigate these, this relationship world and have a more fruitful life 